Hello everyone and welcome back to our class in Artificial Intelligence and Finance. In this video we want to look at the application of neural networks um, in a very generic example that is frequently used in economics and finance, but that is uh, scanning documents. Um, usually these documents only exist in paper form um, and we have invoices, bank statements, printouts of static data, business cards, uh, receipts, etc. And um, a scanned image cannot be searched in its native state. Um, thus, it is usually common to digitize printed text to enable electronic editing, searching, compact storage and online display. And then for this, you need neural networks. Uh, the retrieved hidden text behind an image can also be fed directly into further machine processes. For example, automatically managing invoices, receipts, uh, transactions. And uh, you can imagine that this is usually the starting point, digitalization of these printed documents um, that uh, decades and years ago um, were only available in printed form, but nowadays they can be digitized and uh, used in a computer. Now, the technique behind this is usually called optical character recognition, OCR, and this is done by neural networks. Um, this is one of the most basic um, applications uh, of neural networks. Um, one can also use them in asset pricing. I'll comment on that later on. Uh, but uh, I think this is very instructive because you can easily see how the neural networks uh, work. So on the following slides, we employ neural networks for the task of handwritten digit recognition, a classification problem with 10 classes, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. We have uh, a handwritten note and we want the neural network to be able to decide is this a one, is this a five, or is it zero, for example. We start with the multi-layer perceptron. It doesn't make too much sense to use a single layer um, perceptron here if we can also use the multi-layer one. The principle is the same. And we will discuss some regularization techniques to prevent the model from overfitting. And we will also fit a convolutional neural network to the data. For the application, we now rely on the MNIST database that is provided within the Keras R package. And this database contains 60,000 training and 10,000 test examples of handwritten digits. And more details on this particular um, data set uh, can be accessed um, at this link here. So um, this is the MNIST database in Keras. Okay. So we employ the Keras R package uh, for fitting the neural networks. This package provides an interface for the open source Python library, Keras, which in turn acts as an interface for Google's TensorFlow library. You might have heard TensorFlow, which is the library provided by Google um, on deep learning, machine learning. And the syntax in the R package is very, very similar to the Python syntax in the original library. And it's one of the leading high-level neural network APIs. And it has a focus on enabling fast experimentation, quite user-friendly, and it also allows the training of neural networks on both CPUs and GPUs without changing the codes. Um, we need additional um, computation power here, and it also supports arbitrary network architectures, and it's quite appropriate for building essentially any deep learning model. That's why we are using this here, and also we are able to stay within R. Now, before we can start to work with the data, we have to install the Python, Keras, and TensorFlow backend first. This can mainly be done from within R, and during the process, you might be asked which TensorFlow version you want to have installed. If you use default, this yields the CPU version, which we'll use here. But please note that installing Python Keras via the Keras R package seems not to work on the R Studio service. So if you are using R Studio, please use your own computer and uh, this doesn't work. So before executing the following lines of code, please also install Anaconda with the default settings from here. That's uh, Anaconda. And then you install Keras and this uh, third line will also install Miniconda and several Python packages, Keras, NumPy, etc. So this is what we need in the back end in order to be able to fit our multi-layer perceptrons and our neural networks. 
Again, we start by importing the data. We load the library Keras, and then MNIST is dataset MNIST. This downloads the database, uh, the object size uh, divided by 100, um, no, actually 1 million. Uh, this is 219, this is the size in megabytes. So this is not really large, but it might be too much for, uh, let's say, a regular uh, notebook. Uh, might be that the data, even this rather small data set, is even too large um, for a regular notebook. So this is why uh, we are not using larger data samples here in this lecture. To have a look at uh, the structure of MNIST, you can see it's a list of two. Uh, it's training, dollar training, that's one object, and dollar test. And you see it is now a very simple structure. Why is that? Well, uh, the data basically is, uh, these are just digitized images. It's not features like in the insurance risk premium uh, data sample where we saw we have age, gender, etc. These are all images and they are not saved as images, as JPEGs, obviously, but they are saved as, um, as digitized images. And how is this? For example, if we view uh, MNIST, that's our data sample, and in the training data set, X1, the first, um, the first observation, you can see this matrix. You can see a 28 um, by 28 grayscale image. And what you see is actually, these are all numbers. If we zoom in here, you can see these are all numbers. And you can imagine what has been done. Actually, this is one of the images. Let me zoom out. And this actually looks like this. This is one example. It, I would guess this is supposed to be a five. Someone wrote down a five, and this is the uh, digitized version of this. Um, so if you check the image label, you can visualize it. And yes, we would guess that this is a five. Actually, yes, it is. So if we look at the response, the output value for this observation, it's a five. And hopefully later on, our models are able to uh, train on the training data and then be able, if it fed this image to be able to determine that this is supposed to be a five. Okay. Now the data are stored in a three dimensional array. We have, if you take a look at this, as you can see this, this is the first, uh, this is the first dimension one, then the second one and the third one. The first dimension is for the image. This is the first image. So we get a matrix in the remaining two dimensions. So one and two. So actually all the data are stored in a three dimensional array, image by width and height. So um, actually if we were to access one comma three comma two, where's my cursor? Here yeah, it's my cursor. One, we could get the first image three, line three, and column two, we would get this zero. So this is how the data is stored. Now, to be fed into a multilayer perceptron, this matrix has to be flattened. That is, it needs to be transformed into a vector. And additionally, because as you can see, the data is stored in, um, in grayscales uh, from 0 to 250, we need to transform the grayscale values between 0 and 255 to the range between 0 and 1. So x train is mnist dollar train dollar x, y train is mnist dollar train dollar y, and so on for the uh, test data. We need to reshape the data. So x train and x test are x train from before and x test from before, and we reshape them. Um, by um, flattening it. And then we rescale this by dividing all the numbers by 255. If you divide everything by 255, this whole range from 0 to 255 is transformed to the interval from 0 to 1. That's in lines 10 and 11. And then the y data, these are integer vectors with 
obviously integers ranging from 0 to 9. So 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, and so on. And for training, we one hot encode the two vectors into binary class matrices. So this is done via the Keras two categorical function. So you can see here the structure before transformation is 5, 0, 4, 1, 9, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4. These are the values. This was our first image. There was the 5. And if we do this two categorical y train and 10, you can see this is now a matrix. And we now have categorical or binary variables that, for example, if we start with the zero, which is actually the first observation we have, the first binary variable. So is this a zero? No, zero. Is this a zero? Yes, one. Is this a zero? No, no. No, no, and we get 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, etc. And this is why test um, in the same manner. Now, next, in the next video, we are going to fit the multi layer perceptron to this type of data.